I have a great lesson today with, um, we're looking at all the options that dice give us. And we know that the plural for dice is um, die. And everyone's familiar with a basic cubic die. We know that um, this die is all the powers of two, but it's six sided. So let's just say we're part of a conference and we have 24, we have 12 people. We could actually create a special dice that we can roll and it will give us lots of options, 12 options, the numbers from one to 12. So um, most people know of the tetrahedron. Um, the tetrahedron um, has four options. So this, this little tetrahedron, when you roll it, has four faces. So we'll write down tetrahedron. The word hedron means face. And you can see here, this is what we're going to explore. You can see here in my hand, we've got the five platonic solids and they all have different numbers. They're all giving us various options. So we can see here that the tetrahedron gives us the numbers. And we just quickly write down the numbers for all of them. So this is great if you have, um, you want choices. So the next one would be the, the cube. We do, we've looked at the cube and we know that the cube has six options. So the basic cube, six faces. And later on, we need to know how many corners or vertices and etc. Et like that. So then we've got the next shape is called the octahedron. So an octahedron looks like this. And in 3D as a transparent shape, it looks a bit like that. And when we count the triangles, we have eight. So here's a die with eight options. Um, one of my favorite ones is called the icosahedron. And an icosahedron looks like this. And in as a transparent view, we have 20 options here, 20 numbers. So we've got 20 for icosa. And now the, the one that has um, pentagonal faces is the dodecahedron. The dodecahedron has 12 pentagon faces like that. So you can write the numbers on these shapes and it looks um, a bit like this in 3D as a dice. It's got, you can see here, it's got the 12 possible comb combinatorics. So that's 12. And, and the reason why I've shown you that is that we're gonna take one of these, the icosa, pull up a pentagonal face, and we're gonna come up with another possibility but that gives us 10. If you've got 10 people and you wanna have 10 choices, we need to create a dice with 10. So just to show you, um, there's a great book called Quadrivium, and this is full of sacred geometry. And it shows you, for example, here that we've got the five platonic solids. So they're well known, and you can go deep into that exploration of the five platonic solids. But there's another set of shapes called the 13 Archimedeans. So here these, these shapes are called semi-regular because they have different faces like the soccer ball has pentagons and hexagons. So I'll show you that if you wanted more options like different numbers, you could um you could have this shape here. This is this is this is also 12. This is 12 diamonds. It's not a platonic solid, it's one of the 13 Archimedeans. That gives you 12. Um this one here gives you uh 24. You, um, this has got six squares and eight triangles. So that's actually 14 different faces. So you could have 14 numbers. This one here is the inside of an icosidodeca. It's It's got 30 diamonds, but it's not actually an Archimedean. It's called a Catalan. Same as this. This one is the Catalan because the Catalan means that this shape is inside this Archimedean. They sort of conjugal or paired. So you can see that there's infinite exploration of possibilities. But today's lesson is um, we want to explore a shape that has 10 uh, faces. And I'm going to kind of draw it here for you. Um, it's called, this is the shape that we're exploring. It's got a funny name. It's called a, a pentagonal dipyramid. And di means two, but some people call it bipyramid. So this is an interesting shape which we'll explore. And I'll try, and if you wanted to draw that as a dice, we need to recognize that it does have five um, sides at the top here. So at the moment, you can only see one, two, you can see three triangular faces, but to make it multi-dimensional or three-dimensional, you can see that I've got one, two, three, four, five, and the same again down here. 
So this is just a view of a two dimensional view of a three dimensional shape. And the reason I'm showing you this is that you've got, you don't have to put the number 10, you could start having zero if you want. And you know, you've got all your numbers like two, five, seven, and there's many numbers behind. But the reason I'm showing you this is that there's a problem with the number six and nine. So if I have six like that, to know that that's a six on your die, you might have to put a line underneath it. Or some people, they put a dot at the top, but you have to work out a way to distinguish between the six. So if I draw the nine here, which is kind of like rounded, it still could look like a six if the die dice is upside down. So again, find a method where you underline the sixes and the nines. So that's the only reason I drew that. So I'd like to show you the net. So if you wanted to create this by yourself, you need what's called a, a net. A net is a diagram that will show us what it looks like. So, so that means that this, these triangles here, one, two, three, four, five. See there's, and there's one, two, three, four, five, but we've doubled it. So you can see that this is the net that when, it, when you fold it up, it makes this form. So you can see that if I sort of squashed it up a bit like that, and it's not a very dynamic form, like it, it's interesting, but it's very low, it's sort of squashed. And, but there's another one, so, so this is another way to do it. So we've got this net here, but this is also the same, an alternative net. It looks like the letter M, but they create exactly the same shape. And so what's interesting is that I'm going to show you, if we just only looked at the top half, we call that a pentagonal pyramid. So to get a pentagonal pyramid, this one, this is a pentagonal pyramid because this one is the bi-pyramid and you can see that it's very low and flattened and it could look like a craft, saucer, flying saucer. But this one has a bit more of an elegant shape to it because it's um, uh, it's got what we call the golden triangles. So how do we get this one? Um, we, get, we get this by folding up the five-pointed star. So when you have the pentacle, right, just the basic five-pointed star, which is, this is the common form of it, and it has five golden triangles. All we need to do is fold up those five triangles to a point, and then you end up with this one here. So this is how I got the pentagonal pyramid. So you might want to um, put two of these together. So if I had this one here and another one below it, you'd have a more diamond form. Um, so there's different frequencies, different variations of the same one. And again, if I wanted to create this, instead of using the five-pointed star, I could, um, here's another net. And these are the little tabs. So when you do it, you've got these little tabs here, which, which um, the, these little tabs here have to be folded or, or scored. So, so you can see here, I've made a little tab here. So all these lines have to be folded back and forth so that they move. And so all these will fold and make the pyramid. So I just wanted to show you that. Now, so I have a really um, interesting question. Um, so before we get to the conclusion of this, I wanted to show you a variation of the five. Is called this, this, another variation of this is called the hexagonal pyramid. So th this has got a hexagon base, it's six-sided, but it's got six elongated points. And the way to create that is to take um, the net. So here's a net. So if you didn't want the five sides, but you wanted the six, you would have to fold, cut this out, fold all the tabs. It's called he hexagonal die pyramid. And another version of that is that if you didn't want to do it this way, um, this will create two. Whereas if you just wanted the one, if you just wanted this one alone, you would have to use the hexagon in the middle with six triangle faces on it. So this gives you this shape. And then if you want to double this and make it like a real diamond form, you need the two. So these are all available on the internet. So just wanted to show you that you can take a basic hexagon form like this or like that, but you would need to elongate those triangles so that they come to a point. Because if you folded, if you just had your hexagon in the middle here and folded up those equilateral triangles, I'd only touch the center and they'd stay flat. So this won't give you 
um, volume because six equilateral triangles form the hexagon. So you need to have an elongated, and if I was to elongate it, you would do it in the golden ratio. So I just wanted to show you that, that um, you can take any shape you want. You might want to do, you might want to do a seven pointed star or an eight pointed star or a nine pointed star, but remember to keep elongating the triangles and use the golden ratio when you do that. So I have a question for you to conclude. Um, um, what, what I have is a question is that if you were to take, um, if you were to look at the shape here, we know it's called a pen, uh, the die pyramid. And we're, at, we're only just to look at, say, this shape here, the pentagonal pyramid. We're, we're not looking at the die pyramid. We just took the basic pyramid. And if we was to truncate the top of that, truncate means to cut. So when you cut this shape, you end up with a volume called the frustum. So th this is an old Latin word. So there's other shapes from cutting these pointed shapes that give us new shapes. So if you were to um, truncate this and open it up and look at the net, what shape, what do you think you would find? So this is the solution here. The solution is, is that the origin of the, is the, the net that creates this frustum here. Here's the frustum which is made from a series of trapezoids. So a trapezoid is a trapezium that has two parallel sides, like the top and the bottom, and two non-parallel sides because the sides are sloping. So we can make uh, a pentagonal pyramid with the top taken off, but when we open this up, this is the net. So the net of the um, pentagonal pyramid, when it's truncated, produces this angelic, Form. So I call her the angel of geometry. And the reason why um, I'm showing you this is that you can create the net for this angel of geometry and you might want to um, encode, you might, before you fold up the angel of geometry, you can pro take five morals of virtues that you resonate to called love, truth, beauty, trust, peace, whatever you resonate to so that when you are creating this, you're pouring your consciousness into the geometry, into the volume, into the, into the ether, the space. And you're reminding yourself that every time you see this frustum, this geometry, you are reminded to of your prayer, of your affirmation, of, of that which you would like to manifest. So I'm showing you this knowledge, not to give you knowledge, to remind us that we can use sacred geometry to... Um, empower our thoughts to be conscious of what we who we are as creators that every thought we have is a creation every shape that we talk about has a certain frequency so when we align ourselves with the pure principles of sacred geometry and pour our prayers into these volumes that we create we are actually amplifying the god essence of who we are